Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we'll take a look at Chuck Hellebuck's clever little bed leveling tool. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. This episode of the BB3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to get a look at Chuck Hellebuck's bed leveling tool. Someone was talking about him on Twitter a few weeks ago when I said I needed to order one, and then Chuck sent me a DM and said he'd send me one, and so now I have one, and here it is, and I'm going to talk about it right after I take a breath from this huge run on sentence. There, that's better. And thank you, Chuck. That was very kind of you to send this over. Oh, I want you all to know that when Chuck sent this, it wasn't like, hey, I'll send you one if you'll review it. It was just, here, have one. Enjoy. And since I happen to think it's a pretty neat little tool, I wanted to show it to you. So if you haven't seen this thing before, this is a clever little device that you can use to make sure the distance between your 3D printer's nozzle and its bed are the same at all four corners. Now this is more correctly known as tramming the bed and is more commonly known as leveling the bed because you're making sure that the bed is at the same level as the nozzle at all four corners when the z-axis is honed. Now it's a deceptively simple device. It's just a small circuit board with a coin cell battery, a resistor, a switch, and an LED that lights when the switch is pressed. So the idea is that you use this as a contact probe between the nozzle and the bed right over each of the bed adjustment knobs. Check the description for a link to Chuck's website, chuckclub.com. If you follow that link, there's a zip file there that you can download. The zip file contains three folders. One for Ender 2 size printers, one for Ender 3 size printers, and one for the Ender 3 Max size printers. Inside each of those folders, there are two G-code files. There's one that moves the nozzle around to the corners so you can make your adjustments, and another to print a series of concentric squares. That squares test file is useful for verifying that you've got a good first layer. It also gives you the opportunity to fine tune your bed knobs or adjust your Z offset if you need to. So I've got my Ender 3 Max V2 Pro here. This is my Frankenstein's monster mashup of a printer. It's an Ender 3 Max with an Ender 3 V2 screen and a very slightly customized version of the Gyres UI edition of the Marlin firmware, but mechanically it's an Ender 3 Max. So, I'll open up the e-leveler files I downloaded from that link in the description, and then copy the two Ender 3 Max size files onto a microSD card and put that card in the printer. You'll use the files corresponding to your printer size, of course. Make sure your printer's nozzle is clean. If there's a blob of filament stuck on the tip, you might not get a good result. Oh, and do this with the bed and nozzle cold. If you have a Z-offset value set on your printer, make note of it, but then set your Z-offset to zero. And then get ready with the e-leveler and select the e-leveler file to print. The printer will move the nozzle to each of the four corners and stay at each one for 20 seconds. At each corner, put the crosshair mark of the e-leveler directly under the nozzle. Turning the bed adjustment knob clockwise brings the bed closer to the nozzle, and turning the knob counterclockwise moves the bed further away from the nozzle. So adjust the knob until the LED just turns on. Now if the LED is already on when you put the E-leveler under the nozzle, adjust the knob to turn it off, and then adjust again until the LED just turns on. After 20 seconds, the nozzle will move to the next corner and you'll perform the same adjustment there. This process repeats until it's gone to all four corners. After it's waited at the fourth corner for 20 seconds, the nozzle will go back to the left side of the bed. Now, the first time you do this, you may not have enough time to get the E-leveler positioned under the nozzle and get the knob adjusted at each corner, but that's okay. You can rerun the file again, and that should give you enough time to do it. To test your results, print the squares test file. If you need to, adjust your Z offset up or down a little bit so the filament is sticking to the bed and it isn't squished too much and the squares look just right. On mine, I needed to set the Z offset to 0.2 millimeters and then things look perfect. So if your printer's firmware allows you to adjust the Z offset value, I think that will help ensure success. 
and save your settings on the printer so it'll remember that value. If your printer doesn't let you adjust the Z offset, you can still fine tune during the squares test by adjusting the knobs. So is the Filament Friday e-leveler better than using a sheet of paper to level the bed? Well, if you're comfortable using a piece of paper or a feeler gauge to level the bed on your printer, you're probably not going to see a benefit from the e-leveler. But if you struggle to get the bed leveled using the paper pincher method, you might want to give this a shot. That bright red LED kind of takes the guesswork out of the process. Now I'd like to thank Chuck Hellebuck again for sending this over to me. Chuck is an awesome human being. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.